more bad optics for the president, he seemed to wobble and steady himself boarding Air Force One. Look, he's 82 years old, and each time we see the president wobble and have to steady himself, you think, well, Gavin Newsom is 56, he might just be one wobble away. <laughs> what do you got to say, David Bonson? I turned 50 in two weeks. I fell a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Uh, you know what, Biden, uh, my big concern is, is all of his policies are really bad. Yeah, that's more of a concern. Thank, thank you. <laughs> and also uh, President Harris might well, be also something true. of a concern. Yeah. All right. Uh, check the markets, please. Where are we now? We've got a mixed picture. Dow's up 100 points. There's a couple of Dow stocks which are doing very well, and that accounts for the Dow Industrial's 100-point gain. Back to David Barnson. Why are you so closely looking at consumer stocks? Why now? What's well, it's story? consumer staples. And so when you look at the consumer discretionary names, you get things that are usually very levered. They're not dividend payers. They're not good cash flow. But consumer staples are things people have to buy. And I think as all those inflationary pressures are coming down, their prices have stayed up. So their margins expand. And so when you get companies like Pepsi, General Mills, Procter Gamble, Clorox, they're making a ton of money. They're well-run companies. We always really like that sector. And they pay, pay dividends. And they're right? all dividend growers. Because that's your deal, right? That's right. We would not be buying them if they weren't dividend growers. Okay. Uh, it, but dividend growers is the important point, Th as right. opposed to just a high dividend now, which may dissipate in the future. Yeah, we want to a good dividend above the market that is growing year over year. Okay. Stay there, please. You're with me for the hour, you lucky guy. Uh, Lauren, you're looking at the movers. I want you to start with, the, Rob, put it on the screen, Robin Hood. Is it moving up or down? It should be up and up big time because they reported their second quarterly profit in a row. Shares have basically doubled. Bonson's got that sour look on his and face. And they did again. well with crypto. You know, you know, in my business, the more assets you bring in, we get more fees from clients. Well, they bring in 11 billion. What's their revenue from that? Off the top of my head. No though, revenue. Though. No revenue. Zero trading. They're not a bank. It was record revenue. I they're, they're, the they're, what I'm saying is the assets come in and their revenue is if they lend out stocks to others, which has become real controversial. It's a tough company there. Got it. Costco. Just for you, Stuart. Oh, just for me. Thank you very much. A double-digit increase, a 15% increase in their online sales. Hmm. Pretty good. Um, and their average transaction value also increasing by 1%. The stock's up 1%. I don't see any sour looks from Barnes on this one, Costco. Yeah, we don't own it. We've looked at it in the past, but I have nothing uh, sarcastic to say. Do you shop there? I'll get there later. Don't <laughs> Do worry. Do you shop there? <laughs> uh, my, my wife does. <laughs> okay, got it. Not that much action on the market this morning. Okay, the Dow is up 150. There's a couple of Dow stocks that are doing well, but a fractional gain for the S&P, a, a very small loss for the Nasdaq at this stage. David Barnson with us for the hour, and he's brought his famous dividend picks with him. Gilead Sciences. Well, Gilead is down on the year, so I like being able to talk about names that people can buy at a cheaper price. I'm in a little bit of a fight with Gilead right now, and you say, why are you promoting a company that you're in a fight with? But that's why I'm in a fight with them, because I believe in the company. Great oncology treatment, great HIV treatment. They're a leader in making drugs for HIV. They're acting a little woke right now on some things. So I gave a speech at the shareholder meeting this week. We're trying to fight them. They're saying they want to support reproductive uh, rights from uh, employees. And I said, do you do that for adoption? And they wouldn't answer us. So we're having a little discussion with them. But nonetheless, you like it. We like the company. Four and a half percent yield. Huh. And we think it's going to grow substantially in the years ahead. That's the big deal. Truest financial. Yes, Truist is a super regional bank. It was the old BB&T and SunTrust Bank that merged together. And uh, it's come back up quite a bit from its low, but it's still off its high. Very profitable. They just sold their insurance company for $15 billion. They're well capitalized, and we think Truist has a good profit motive ahead and very big dividend. What do they pay? Over 5%. Ah, kicker. Now, I want to show the viewers Beyond Meat mm. because uh, it's not doing well. And David has frequently said that stock's going to zero. Well, let me share a couple stats with you. If you tell me if you ever heard of a company before that has a negative return on equity of 1,167%. No, I've not heard that. Uh, that they lose $300 million a year. Uh, this is in the peak of their hype when they were announcing new contract after new contract over the last several years, and they bled billions of dollars. The stock has come from, I think, 190 to 7, and uh, this will go to zero. It's a disaster of a company. People are buying this idea, but you have to make money, and it turns out it's not profitable to eat fake meat. 
I, on the other hand, have supported the real meat industry more than I probably should have for many years. So you, think, you still think it's going to zero? I absolutely think the stock is going to zero. And we'll leave it right there. All right, David, thank you. I'm yeah. coming back to you, David Barnson. Is there any sign of any kind of recovery for the housing industry? Well, let's, let's be clear that the housing prices aren't what has dropped much. It's just anyone doing anything. Nothing is selling. Ash is right. The refis were up 5% last week. They're down 99%. Yeah. So they're up 5% from being down 99%. You know, it just takes like three guys around the corner to decide so, they need to. Uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to imagine anyone who right now is refinancing at a cheaper rate than they've had. So there's probably cash out needs. Uh, yeah. And that's the I only reason anybody would be refinancing. It's not to lower their rate. Uh, the problem is housing's frozen until the Fed cuts rates. Then I suspect that you'll get a little bit of a bid higher and then the affordability will be a big factor and then you're going to get a big level down big level down in prices in they're, prices. they're just far, far too expensive we're not building enough new homes that's pretty true Dave, and i think, think blue you. state governors and blue cities for that problem that refuse to let us build new housing stock because they're not having the problem building new homes in north carolina and in arizona and texas those that's markets right. are awfully expensive too they've now. gotten expensive because of demand really expensive, they've yeah. gotten to, and it takes time for supply to catch up to demand that's a good point Lauren. i agree David Barnson sitting right next to me. How long are we going to have to be paying for the mistakes that the government made during COVID? We're going to be paying for it for the rest of all of our lives, not just your life, but even my life and my kids' life, which, you know, hopefully as many decades to go here. <laughs> Trillions of dollars of money spent around different mistakes. Kids that didn't get to go to school for a couple of years that are behind in reading, writing, arithmetic. But what they were talking about there with that fraud situation, that's at a state level that was so bad under Julie Sue in California, it's laughable. The idea that she could now become a labor secretary with that kind of power, with her incompetence, is reprehensible. But the PPP and especially that ERC program, the employee re- retention credit, they paid out a trillion dollars to people that didn't need the money, fraudulent claims. It's totally inexcusable. We're paying for it for years and years to come. Well, David, thanks very much for being on the show today and staying for the hour. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir.